Shalom. Welcome to GMS Gallows on the Streets. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Kudash, who my worship, the Ba'anans to the elder apostles, the great millstone who taught me this word in sincerity and in truth, and who rule well. I'm Elder Zakarun from the GMS New York camp, and uh, today's lesson or show is going to be on exorcism. Um, just saw this article on RT today and is dealing with a surge of um, uh, demonic possessions in, um, in I guess, Italy, Italy. A lot of people asking for uh, demons to be exercised from them and they're running to the Roman Catholic priests to exercise these demons from them. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to let you know this, that um, the Heavenly Father, all right, the creator of, of all, of all things, and his son, they are not with the Roman Catholic Church, okay? The Holy Spirit is not dealing with them. So these Roman Catholic priests are actually um, putting more, uh, evil spirits on people, okay? Because the Roman Catholic religion is nothing but a modern day um, Dagon worship or uh, or Baal worship which are which are false deities or demonic deities okay <clears throat> and um, and that goes hand in hand with um, the worship of Satan okay if you notice in this picture right here you got this uh, this person holding a cross and they're holding it upside down. All right, um, holding a cross upside down is, um, or a cross upside down or broken is a symbol of um, witchcraft, Satanism, okay? There's nothing good about that. First of all, cross period is, is, is not a good symbol because that represented um, the, the, the manner that our Lord was um, crucified and killed, all right? I mean, our Lord resurrected, of course, but uh, that's not a good symbol. That's why you're not supposed to be, be wearing no cross. It's, it's, you know, it represents the manner that the um, the Roman Edomites used to uh, kill our people. All right, um, that's that's like saying, you know, these cops that kill our people out in the streets uh, with the gun. Here it is to memorize our lost ones we're gonna wear guns around our necks no that don't make sense right so you're not so you're not to wear a cross around your neck so anyway this is not what that uh what this lesson is all about is all about <coughs> but it ties in just a little so what i'm gonna do is read the article and then uh pull up some scriptures okay and uh, uh you brothers who are listening, you can um, make sure to to subscribe, hit the bell, um, and you know add your comments or make your own videos um, off of this land backing off of this video. So this is um, the title of this article from RT is Vatican launches exorcism course to battle threefold surge in demonic possession. It says, the Vatican is introducing exorcism training for Italian priests to cope with a surge in demand for the expulsion of evil spirits. Requests have tripled of late, according to Sicilian priest and trained exorcist Benigno Paligia. The priest told Vatican Radio, that the number of exorcism cases has risen to almost 500,000 each year. Pal Palija put the increase down to the upturn in people seeking out tarot, tarot, tarot readers or tarot card readers and psychics. Doing, doing so opens the door to the, to the demon and to possession, which is true. If you go seek out tarot card readers and psychics, um, 
those are witches, you know, dealing with uh, evil spirits, you know what I'm saying? Um, but going to the Roman Catholic Church is even even worse, okay? Because there are there are top level de uh, demons dealing or within the Roman Catholic religion, and de especially dealing with uh, within the Vatican. All right. Um, uh, I believe it was Apostle Gabar who brought out that the word uh, Vatican, the etymology of the word Vatican. Uh, is Va I believe Vaticanus, <laughs> and it means and it means um, certain. Uh, I believe serpents. Give me a second. Let me look that up. Yeah. So I um, I believe it was um, Basco Bar who brought out that the word Vatican means, uh, that it literally means um, uh, prophet serpents. And um, I got this here. Pulled this up from Google, and it says, uh, "Let me see here." It says, "By Emperor Constantinus in the early fourth century, with the crest of Marduk." Yeah, and Con Constantine and Constantinus and those uh, those Roman emperors. Um, going back to the to the um. Byzantine or the holy so-called holy Roman Empire those were all Jakes those were all Israelites um, <clears throat> and what they were doing is they were trying to mix mix the um, the word of the Lord with paganism all right the worship of the Sun the worship of um, deities like right here like as I mentioned got Constantinus wearing the crest of Marduk so it got nothing to do with the Lord. Um, um, the, the worship of deities and these or other religions have nothing to do with the word of the Lord. You can't mix the two. Okay. Um, so it says the word Vatican liter literally means divining serpent or, or prophes uh, prophesying serpent, you could say. And is derived from Vatus. I believe that's old old Latin. Uh, Vatus equals diviner and and can or can equals serpent. Vatican City Vatican City and Saint Peter's Basilica were were built on the ancient pagan site called in Latin Vaticanus Mons or Vaticanus Colus, which means hill or mountain of prophecy <clears throat> all right but it's not the prophecy of the lord is in other words it's the uh, prophecies of divining spirits evil spirits man witchcraft there's some history behind it this is another page i pulled up i said uh it says the word vatican it says, uh, is it true that the word Vatican means from the Greek word Vatis equals divine and can equals serpent? Uh, I got some guy here. Um, somebody put an entry in. He says, no. The supposedly Greek words Vatis and can are not even proper Greek at all. You know, this is this guy's own opinion. Uh, nor do they mean divine spirit. But yes, the region was originally infamous as being an unhealthy, swampy area and a breeding ground for snakes that even Pliny reported that there were snakes there of such enormous size who were known to swallow babies whole. Okay, so on that premise alone, I'll believe it to to mean um, prom, prom, um, prophesying. Serp serpents or divining serpents. All right. So, so Pliny said that that area where the Vatican is used to be a swampy area and a breeding ground for snakes. All right, and that's exactly what it is right now. It's a a breeding ground for for snakes, evil snakes. And what I mean by that is, um, these. These Roman Catholics and these 
these uh, Jesuits and all and the Pope and the Cardinals and all those people there, all right, claiming the seat of uh, of some kind of holy seat. They are they are all serpents, man. All right, and they they are all of the devil. So let's go back to uh, the article at hand. It says the Vatican is introducing exorcism training. Now, how can how can how can evil spirits cast off or exercise evil spirits? If they do that, they'll 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 they'll, they'll both um uh, um eradicate. Or destroy themselves, right? Because according to what the Lord said, give me a second. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of the Most High, Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh is come unto you. And it's so right. So the, I brought that out dealing with this article here. Um, the Vatican are, is, is giving training, training on uh, for their priests to, to cast off spirits. But how the hell could they do that when their priests? When their priests are demons themselves, man, right? So it says the Vatican is introducing exorcism training for Italian priests to cope with a surge in demand for the expulsion of evil spirits. <clears throat> Requests have tripled of late, according to Sicilian priest and trained exorcist Benigno Paligia. Uh, it says the, the priest told Vatican Radio that the number of exorcism cases has risen to almost five five hundred thousand each year. Paligia put the increase down to the upturn in people seeking out terror terror uh, terror readers and psychics. Doing so opens the door to the demon and to possession. He said, however, he conceded that not all of these uh, cases were related to demonic possession and some were, in fact, a result of psychological or spiritual problems. Yeah, like that, they, they don't have the word of the Lord. That's, that's where it stems from. And the Lord's not with them. A lot of them are Edomites. Okay. And those demons, they have a field day with them. Uh, it shows something here. Uh, RT missing woman dies in in apparent satanic suicide pact in Greek guest house. It says the occult market in Italy is booming, according to a 2017 consumer report, which claims 13 million people turn to psychics and pseudo healers annually. Unemployment, economic problems, and uncertainty about the future are among the top reasons. For seeking these services, the report noted. According to Paligia, self taught exorcists can encounter cha uh, challenges. And an apprenticeship program similar to that of other professions would be beneficial to new priests. Um, when did you hear about Yahweh Shai giving um, some kind of apprenticeship program to the disciples to cast off evil spirits, man. No, he just told them, look, man, you're going to be endowed with this power and you're going to go ahead in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and in faith and cast off these, these spirits. That's it. It says, in interest in performing exorcisms is dwindling among younger priests. However, many of them are scared and have no interest in spending time in windowless rooms Reading Exorcism Rites, Seasoned Exorcist Friar Vincenzo Taraboleggi said in 2016, Earlier this year, a renowned Irish exorcist and priest called on the Catholic Church to appoint more exorcists. Uh, it says, read more demon-busting Irish priest calls for more exorcists. Who are you going to call? They're, they're trying to call the boy busters. <laughs> That's what they are. It says training is taking place this month in Sicily. And yeah, they do more boy busting than ghost busting over there in the Vatican, man. It says training is taking place this month in Sicily and will address sex linked to Satanism. 
Me, well, they got to start with their own shit, with their own place, man, the Vatican. Because that's nothing but Satanism at a high level, man. It says, meanwhile, an international conference on exorcism will take place in Rome in April to discuss how to move forward in a, uh, in a current climate where many Christians don't believe in the existence of the devil or possession. Possession by demons is an accepted belief in the Catholic Church. And, and there, is, there is such a thing of demon possession. Yes, there is. Okay? There's, there's many, plenty of examples in the scriptures, which I'm going to get to. Maybe not all, but some. All right? It says, in 2014, Pope Francis gave his blessing to the International Association of Exorcists, officially recognizing exorcism under canon law. And that's it on that. That's it for that article. So I'm going to bring out some scriptures. Let's go to the uh, book of Mark, the uh, fifth chapter. And the first verse. And it says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. The Gadarenes, that's talking about the tribe of Gad. Okay. Which, at that time, the Gadites were not there. The Gadites... The Gadites had, had been taken a long time ago by the, um, by the uh, king of Assyria, Shalemanezar, around 725 B.C. And then from, and, 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 and they took them, Shalemanezar, the, uh, the king of the Assyrians, took Israel, the ten tribes, brought them to his land, to, uh, into Assyria. And then, after many years, they escaped the Assyrians and sailed over here to this to the Western Hemisphere, all right, to what is now known as uh, the Americas, or the so-called New World, right? That's another um, topic. Verse 2, it says, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit is uh, a demon. Okay, this man had a, 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 a many unclean spirits within him. And it says, uh, verse 3, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fet those evil spirits, those demons, gave him strength, man damn near superhuman strength and the fetters broken in pieces uh, neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting cutting himself with stones but when he saw Yahweh Shai afar off he ran and worshipped him so it's showing you that angels and demons alike worship our Lord Yahweh Shai Okay, because both sides are controlled by him, by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Seventh verse, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yahweh Shai, thou son of the Most High Power? I adjure thee by the Most High Yahweh, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. 
Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them, showing you that swine, a swine is a pig, showing you that pigs are unclean. You're not supposed to eat them like, like the law of the Lord says. Okay. 13th uh, verse. Uh, and forthwith Yahweh Shai gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, into the pig, pigs, the herd of pigs. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they, and they that fed the, uh, the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what, what it was. That was done. And they and they come to Yahweh Shai and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And and they that saw it told them how it uh, how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, um, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Yahweh Shai suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord uh, Yahweh hath done for thee. The Lord, well, actually, the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai had done for thee. And had and had compassion on thee, and he departed and began to publish in the capitalists how great things Yahweh Shai had done for him, and and all men did marvel. So, so you see, he healed the man. He he exercised those evil spirits from him, and then you know, the man wanted to um, you know follow him, be a disciple. Of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai said, nah, you know, just, just go back to your friends and tell them the story of what happened. Showing you that, you know, not everybody is a disciple of Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me, let me pull up another scripture. Okay, so that was a, uh, an example of an exorcism there that was performed. We're going to go to Matthew, the 8th chapter, in the 16th verse. We're going to go to the 14th verse. And it reads, And when Yahweh Shai was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Yeah, um, also, be, being sick, those are... Those are uh, a form of evil spirits, you know, possessing your body, making you sick. All right. Uh, the 15th verse. And he, and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, with evil spirits or demons. And he cast out the spirits uh, with his word and healed all that were sick. That's all you need, right? The word of the Lord, the word of, uh, and of which uh, GMS, uh, beginning with the apostles and elders and teachers on down, we possess the word, the holy word of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, the only true power of everything, okay? In this day and age. Um, it says, and that's all you need. You don't need no 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 freaking program, you know, some so, some kind of pro exercising uh, uh, program to teach you how to cast off spirits. All you gotta have is one thing, and that's faith in the real word of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And you have to be a, a, a Israelite to possess His word. 
All right, beginning with that. 17th verse, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now when Shai saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And, and a scribe uh, came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Shai saith unto him, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So that's going into something else. The main point was at the uh, 16th verse where it says, um, When the even was come, they brought, or the evening, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. So evil spirits and demon possession is truly real. But the only way you get rid of those is you have to be a man of, of the Lord and you got to possess the real word of, of, of the Most High. All right. The real power, the real God of the Bible, which is um, Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai and he is only dealing with his people, the Israelites. All right. His chosen people amongst the Israelites, amongst the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Puerto Ricans, so-called Native American Indians scattered throughout the whole world, believe it or not. All right, let's see if I, I believe I have another scripture to go to. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go to Matthew, the 17th chapter, 21st verse, because there are different levels of demons, all right? And you you got to do certain things to, you You got to be in a, one on a higher level in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, in his word, in faith, and the certain things that you got to do to cast off a certain type of, of, uh, of uh, evil spirit. You know, you got different levels of evil spirits, man, okay? Uh, we're going to go to Matthews, the uh, 17th chapter. Um, second. The 14th verse. And it reads, And when they were come to the multitude, there, uh, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. So they, they brought he brought his son to the disciples and they couldn't cure him of, of this this you know of those evil spirits that was in his son then Yahweh Shai answered and said O oh, faithless and perverse generation how long shall, shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring him hither to me and Yahweh Shai rebuked the devil meaning the, the demon that was possessing his that man's son and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that. Yeah, notice what it says. I said cured. It, it didn't say that the sickness was prolonged in that in that in that man's child. Okay? I said cured, man. Because the, 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 the true way to cure someone is to cast off those evil spirits from people. Okay? Through the word, through the word, the holy word of the Lord. And Yahweh shall rebuke the devil, the demon, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples, uh, then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Because they tried to cast out the spirit, and the spirit they didn't, they didn't want to leave. 
Okay? And Yahweh Shai, 20th verse. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, because, because of your unbelief, boom, number one, the faith at that particular time, in that particular time of the fight, the faith of the disciples was weak. Okay? That's number one. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out by prayer. Uh, I'm sorry. Howbeit this kind goeth this kind of evil spirit. That's what Yahweh was saying. Goeth not out. But by prayer and fasting. So they had to, one, have faith. Two, um, um, pray. And three, they had to fast to get rid of that particular type of uh, evil spirit. All right. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, there's just, just many other um, scriptures to go to to prove about. Um, concerning evil spirits, <coughs> witches, or what have you. Um. So, um. Anyway, I hope I hope you brothers were um, edified, and um, you know, you can add to this to this lesson or to this show, and uh, or this topic rather. Uh, don't forget to um, you know subscribe, hit the bell, so that you'll be notified always of um shows that I upload. Okay. So with that, um. Um, you know, of course, all praise be to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakotash. Salutations to all the Akim um, out there of the hopeful elect preaching and teaching the word of the Lord in sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. So, um, signing off. <laughs>